is up creatives? It's Jarrell, your music technologist, here to help you master the tech you need to make music freely. Now I've got an interesting one for you guys today. I got a question from one of you guys in the comment section a while back that I thought was really helpful. I responded to it there, but I wanted to share it with all of you guys because I thought it was really good. And I thought it would be a great question, not only for me to ask myself, but for you guys to ask yourselves as well. Also, this video is sponsored by DistroKid, but more on that in a bit. So I'll just go ahead and read the question that was asked. Uh, Jeff Goddard asked, why use your iPad for music production when you have a MacBook that can run Logic? Other than YouTube interest in iOS music production from a very high level, what are you trying to accomplish on your iPad that you can't do on your MacBook? Yes, the iPad is slightly smaller and maybe more mobile, but you have it mounted in your studio. What are the real reasons or advantages of iOS music production? Okay, great question. And you're on point because this is a question I've had to ask myself. And the answer I've come to time and time again is because I enjoy it. That's why I make music on the iPad, because it's enjoyable, and that's actually a really important part of making music. Why do I enjoy it? Because the iPad allows me to have a tactile experience thanks to the touchscreen. And I don't think I realized how important having a touchscreen was to me. Being able to just actually play on these pads right here on the screen is a huge win to me. In addition to that, I also get to have basically a modular experience. With the iPad, I can add as much gear as I want to it, like this Akai MPK Mini, or I can unplug, disconnect, and take just this iPad and do stuff with just that. The ability to make this thing as big as I want or as small as I want is a huge win. And it's an even bigger win for me because I enjoy doing everything on one device as much as possible. I like to be able to take it with me wherever I go. I don't like the fragmentation of multiple main devices. I like doing it all on the one iPad. On top of those reasons, there's also software affordability. Most iPad apps go for 10 to 20% of their MacBook desktop counterparts. We're talking about spending tens of dollars or less rather than spending hundreds of dollars on the Mac and PC side. And that really brings down the risk of experimentation. That's one of the things I love about it. Yes, you might run into some stability issues and we'll talk about that in a minute, but at the end of the day, the risk of the money I've spent on these apps is not too bad because they're generally pretty cheap. And these apps are really good at helping you think out of the box and expanding your creativity. But on the flip side, Familiarity is key to creativity as well. And that brings me to why I've been sticking with the iPad for so long. It's because I've poured so much time and effort into learning this program, Beatmaker 3. Those of you that have been watching my channel for a long time, you might remember me making a video talking about experimentation and why we should stop experimenting with so many different DAWs. That's because learning one DAW very well is gonna serve you much better than learning five DAWs pretty mediocrely. I've poured so much into Beatmaker 3 that I really want to learn this thing as much as I can, know it really well so that when I sit down with this thing and I get to making music, it's a wrap. I can make anything I want. That brings the barrier to creating something dope much, much lower. Now, all that said, there are some limitations. There are much fewer mainstream apps and plugins available for the iPad than there are for the desktop and laptop. iPads are pretty darn new when it comes to music production. Now, people have been trying to make it happen for a long time, but it's only started to get serious in the last few years or so. And companies are currently evaluating if the risk is worth jumping into this for the long haul. There's also potentially less money to be made in this market because less people are making music this way and because apps on these devices are generally cheaper than their desktop counterparts, so there's not as much money to be made. That's why there's not as much mainstream attention on this device, even though we have seen some. Another main limitation is no real replacement for Melodyne or FL's new tone. This is the worst pain point for me when it comes to doing this setup. I will pretty often take my vocals out and bring them to my laptop just for manual pitching 
because there's nothing nearly as good as Melodyne or New Tone out there for this. I am waiting for development to pick up in that area, and as soon as it is, I'm gonna cop whatever it is, I'm gonna pitch my vocals on my iPad. The last limitation is there's no drivers available for most non-class compliant hardware. So for example, this thing right here, the Akai MPK Mini is class compliant. Doesn't need any drivers, it's plug and play. Devices that are plug and play are great for iPads, but not everything is plug and play. The stuff by Machina or Machine, however you pronounce it, their stuff generally needs drivers to run. So that's the kind of stuff you're not gonna be able to use on the iPad. There's lots of other hardware out there that needs drivers. Same reason we can't use Universal Audio's Apollo Twin interface because it requires drivers that are not on the iPad. But being creative is less about removing all limitations and more about finding the right set of limitations and removing any friction from your workflow. Kind of like the way DistroKid removes all the friction from getting your music onto online stores. See what I did there? For $20 a year, DistroKid allows you to upload unlimited songs for distribution, but they're also chock full of free resources for their members, just like their new Spotify Canvas generator, which gives you access to thousands of pro quality looping videos that you can add to your releases on Spotify without having to worry about editing a thing. Click my link in the description to get 7% off your first year of DistroKid, and when you support Support DistroKid through my link. You also support this channel, so thank you so much for that. So my final thoughts on this topic for you, find an acceptable set of limitations for your music making setup and remove as much friction as possible so you can make your ideas reality quicker. That's ultimately why I'm making music on the iPad. I enjoy using it and that removes some of the friction of getting in here and doing it. If you sit down and you make some music, in my book that's a win preferably some dope music. But as a music producer myself, I know it's not always easy to make yourself do the thing. I'm enjoying my ride with the iPad, so that's what I'm rocking with. Find whatever works for you. Doesn't have to be the iPad, could be the laptop. Do your thing. But I wanna bounce the same question back to you guys. If you find yourself always coming back to the iPad for music production, what is it that is drawing you? Is it the portability? Is it the touch screen? Is it the fact that apps are cheaper than desktop apps? Or is it something that I didn't even mention in this video? Let me know down in the comments section. Until next time, creatives, go make something dope, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.